to Sharida. Let's talk about emerging market ETFs, and we'll start off down in Brazil, because all eyes are on Rio with the Olympics down there. The EWZ, which is the iShares Brazil ETF, is up about 66% so far year to date, and it's doing so despite an impeachment scandal uh, with Dilma Rousseff, and despite problems at Petrobras, and green water in the diving pool. So how is it doing it, and what makes you think it's going to go further? Yeah, it's interesting. I think what happens in uh, emerging markets a lot of the time is you find uh, the most money or a lot of the gains are made when we go from absolutely awful to not so bad. Um, and I think that's kind of where we've seen Brazil sort of inflect at the bottom there. And that's happened at a time when you start to see hope for political progress moving forward. Uh, growth is sort of meagerly but returning a little bit in terms of expectations. And we're seeing, you know, maybe some small upticks in, in earnings and in, 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 you know, corporate behavior. And all of those things combine together to make the picture a little bit rosier. And all of a sudden you see a lot of performance after many, many years of being beaten down. The comps are very easy to beat and it just sort of starts to jump back up again. And, you know, that's really what's been driving it over the short term. Add to that, we've had you know, a stable sort of commodity market, uh, stabilization in the dollar, and you know, for the real itself, it's, it's started to be a bit more stable. Uh, real effective exchange rates as well as nominal exchange rates have started to come back higher again. These are all good news for emerging markets, and that's ten, that tends to be when you see the uptick. Well, iShares also has the EEM. Right. Now, this is up around 17% so far today. It has almost $30 billion in assets. Yep. This is the one most investors use when they want emerging market exposure. Just started beating the S&P this year after uh, underperforming it for a few years. So what makes you think this is going to keep moving higher? Yeah, it's extraordinary, actually. We've seen just in the post-Brexit period alone, I think, EEM year to date has seen about $6.4 billion of inflow, which is very staggering. About $6 billion of that has come in in that post-Brexit period. And I highlight that because it's an interesting point in the market when, you know, I think people suddenly expected there'd be more easy policy for a longer period of time. Trend rates of growth had come down across the world. It's a good time to start looking for growth in emerging markets. Add to that, you know, what I just said about comps getting a little bit better, we saw emerging markets long, long beaten down. They had relative attractive valuations to other developed markets that have kind of fallen out of favor. And you also start to see things like ROEs tick up a little bit, forward earnings expectations tick up a little bit. These are great things for emerging markets. And as you see that, the backdrop of stable commodity prices in the dollar, you start to see interest pick up there. Now, the INDA, this is another uh, iShares ETF, tracks the Indian market. That said, it's up around 7% year to date, which is fine. But India has uh, not performed as well as a lot of analysts thought it should uh, do over the past two years with reforms from Prime Minister Modi. What's the problem there, and do you think it's going to improve? It's funny you say, what's the problem there? It's a 10,000-year-old civilization, so things don't move very quickly sometimes. You know, I lived in India for five years. I can tell you that's the case. Progress is happening, but it's just a little bit slower, and I think investors got very impatient running it up very quickly immediately after, you know, Modi was in, elected in with a sort of great reform mandate for business, and you saw sort of a great supportive central bank. I think what's helped India, and let's step back and really think about this, uh, the inflationary picture has been under control recently. They've benefited, again, like I said, from some of the sort of uh, tailwinds for emerging markets like commodity prices being stable. India is a net importer of commodities. And what you've also seen sort of help there is that reform agenda is, is getting through now. We just saw the goods and services uh, reform passed in, in the upper house. And I think as that starts to feed through, you start to see growth, you know, which is still very, very strong in the emerging markets, do quite well. And I think over the longer term, as we look at this, this is one of the economies with one of the greatest demographic profiles in the world. Now, they've got a great challenge of putting a lot of people to work. Um, but as that starts to happen, these are very supportive drivers over the longer term for India. And then finally, we've been talking about equity ETFs, but you also have the EMB, which is right. an emerging markets bond ETF. It's having a good year. It's up 11%, and that's equity returns. It yields around 4.7%. So has it topped out here? Because how much further can you drive with bonds, especially with, with the Fed uh, looking to hike perhaps as soon as September? Right, right. So a couple of things I'll unpack there. The first is that you know the emerging market debt space, we're positive on in BlackRock, particularly in the hard currency or the sort of dollar-denominated sovereign space that have higher yields, lower commodity exposures, and sort of have benefited from that stable dollar regime. I think what you find 
um, is, you know, we've termed it the great migration in some quarters within the firm. I don't know if it's because we like the visual imagery of sort of hordes of, you know, uh, bond-seeking wildebeest sort of uh, crossing great distances to find yield, but that's really what's been driving it. It's been this search for yield. And we've actually seen sort of emerging market debt maybe start to decouple with some of the things that have driven it over longer terms, and it's behaving a bit more like a spread product where it's just purely, you know, people searching for yield. Yes, it's become a little bit crowded, especially in that post-Brexit period. EMB is our ETF, uh, and that's seen about $2.3 billion of inflow. Um, and, you know, what we find with that is, um, you know, it's people looking for this yield profile. Can it go further? Absolutely. Uh, I think that's just the yield environment we live in with $13 trillion sort of trading with a negative yield. Um, and so, you know, is it something to watch over time? Yes. But is it something that could go wrong with the Fed or maybe, you know, a, a change in the dollar regime? Absolutely. And I think that that's something that we're watching over the long term. But again, it's important to think about it from that longer term perspective. Could rates stay low for a very long period of time? All right. Well, thanks a lot for coming on and talking about it. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you for watching The Street.